is its umber seal. Welcome to the ground again. Today we are going to talk about this song. Shattered Hand Clan 
taste of liberated slaves who, like him, severed their own chain hands and proceeded to drown Trador in ogre blood. Nowadays, the Grand serves as the site of Iron Lord, crucial strongholds around Draenor, Gromashar, Lock Rat, and Iron Fist Harbor, to name a few. Also, the Ogre Gorion Empire still holds much power here and the magically gifted Imperator Margok rules his people from his seat within the ancient city of Hymor. Although unfavorable political situation forced him to enter an alliance of convenience with the Iron Horn in order to ensure his dwindled empire's safety. The Iron Horn was formed initially as a union of the uncorrupted Orkish clans of a parallel train hall and created by Garrosh Hellscrim and his father Gromash Hellscrim, who was convinced by his unknown son, who was never born in the alternate universe, knowledge of advanced machinery and existence of a different world in order to attain orcish supremacy in the universe. The clans were united under a single leader, Gromash Hellscrim of the Warsaw clan, bent on the conquest of Draenor and Azeroth. The Iron Horde is an enemy to be feared. It is the main antagonist faction of the warlords of Draenor and a successor to the true world which was also Garrosh's creation. Later in the history the Iron Horde ultimately falls under the effects of the blood curse with Kilrock Deadeye being the first to drink the blood of Manorot. After this, Gul'dan assumes control of the organization, while Gromash is imprisoned. Tanan Jungle is the main area of operations of this organization and their headquarters are situated in their own counterpart of Hellfire Citadel. Garrosh Hellscream's intent to create a world ruled wholly by the Orkish race alienated most of the non-Orc members of the new Horde during his reign. He eventually decided to eliminate or enslave every non-Orc, no matter if they were members of the Horde or not. This move an entire rebellion and the alliance to his doorstep. The tenuous coalition ultimately deposed and captured Garrosh, who was then in car. 
was raided by the Shadow Pan in Pandaria. However, at the end of his trial, Karosh escaped with the help of the bronze dragon Kairos, who brought him to a parallel timeline. Draino before the orcs could drink the blood of the pit Lord Manrot. Kairos' plan was for Garrosh to create an uncorrupted horde to be the vanguard against the burning legion in the prime timeline, along with all other counterpart hordes from different timelines. However, Garrosh didn't want to become a puppet for someone else's machinations. He killed Kairos with a shard of the vision of time and set out to convince this timeline's counterpart of his father, Gromash, to form the Iron Horde. Showing Gromash events from the Prime Timeline, Garrosh persuaded him not to drink Manrod's blood. Garrosh introduced modern technology from the Prime Timeline, courtesy of Black Fuse Company engineers and Blackrock clan smiths to arm the orcish clans of this parallel draino. Using this new technology, they set out to ambush the pit lord Manrod and overthrow the burning legion's efforts to enslay the orcs. When Gromash's refusal to drink Manrod's blood caused the pit lord to reveal himself, Garrosh signaled the hidden iron horde to post forth, firing catapults and chains at Manrod. The mighty demon quickly countered their attempts to trap him and lay waste to the orc army. He was ultimately defeated when Gromash leapt to explosion from one of the orc's iron stars to drive Gorhal directly into the pit's lord forehead. With the legion's blood foiled, the orc clans were united under the single banner of the iron Gromash proclaimed a glorious future for their people, with Gul'dan's original plans to invade Azeroth, repurposed to suit the new Iron Horde lost for conquest. Garrosh also encouraged Gromash to begin construction of a massive stronghold at the heart of the Nan jungle to serve as the staging ground for the assault on Azeroth. By the time the events of Warlords of Draino begin, the Iron Horde had existed on Draino for two years and consisted of a legion of 10,000 orcs from Draenor's united clans. Eventually, the Dark Portal was completed, and the Iron Horde began their invasion of the un 
unsuspecting Azrat In just a few short days The Iron March The force of Iron Horn sent ahead into Azrat Managed to conquer the blasted lands And destroy Nedergard Keep By the time Ward got to the forces of Azrat pushing deeper and deeper into the eastern kingdoms and the alliance and horde scrambled towards the blasted lands to defeat the new threat a large force of iron horde led by commander Darbeck managed to rendezvous with Warlord Zayla and the Dragonborn clan and take control of the upper Blackrock Spire to build a weapon that, if unleashed, would destroy a large portion of the Eastern Kingdoms, including Stormwind, which would pave the way for the conquest of the rest of Azeroth. Luckily, the champions of Azeroth stormed the spire and prevented the weapon from being used. The retaliating forces of the Alliance and Horde, led by Khadgar, launched a naval attack on the blasted lands, quickly retaking the shores from the Iron March forces and pushing closer and closer to the Dark Portal. Eventually, the Allied forces managed to pave a road and stormed it once it stopped fluctuating, pushing most of the Iron Horde back to the portal. Despite the great threat of the Iron Horde being temporarily disabled, the remaining Iron March forces still occupy large sections of the blasted lands and the eastern kingdoms. The combined Azerotian forces quickly surged through the dark portal to a parallel vision of the Star of Destiny and held a base against the Iron Horde while the operations commanders freed the imprisoned members of the Shadow Council and shut down the portal. However, the Azeroth Vanguard fell just as the Gul'dan escaped and the remaining forces, including the commanders and Khadgar, were forced to retreat through the jungle to escape the Iron Lord's wrath. During their flight through the jungle, they freed Frostwolf and Draenei slaves, including Maladar and Trekdar, and met with each of the Iron Lord's warlords, but managed to evade them each time. At last, Dalin spotted the wall breaker, a giant tank, and with the commander's help they reached the controls. They fired the tank at the dark portal and destroyed it, but were subsequently forced to flee as the warlords and Gromash appeared on the reach 
divided into two ships the Alliance going with the Draenei and the Horde going with the Frostwolf in the ground the Warsaw clan already has a tight control on the region however that doesn't stop the Alliance in the Horde from establishing outposts in the region and begin working to loosen the Warsong's grip and take out the Iron Horde's allies in the Korean Empire. The Iron Horde's occupation of the La was crippled. Their attempts to assassinate one of the commanders in Lograt failed and most of the strongest of the Korean Empire were forced to retreat to Haimu to avoid death. Ultimately the Alliance and Horde laid siege to Kromasha, the base of the war song, and confronted escaped war criminal himself, Karosh Hellscrim. He seemed to be losing initially, but lashed out with raging fury of attacks that almost immediately turned the tables. The commander and their allies were saved by the intervention of Troll who challenged Garrosh to a Mak Gora at the Stones of Prophecy. In the intense battle that followed, Garrosh initially has the upper hand and blames Straw for all that had happened and denouncing him as lacking the strength of a true warrior. However, Troll reminds Garrosh that he is a shaman and that his strength lies in the elements. Troll summons a fist of rock from the ground that incapacitates Garrosh and states that all that has transpired was Garrosh's choices, after which Tral uses a bolt of lightning to end Garrosh's life. With the creator of the Iron Horde dead, the defenders of Azeroth and Draenor set their sight on dismantling the Iron Horde. They first attack Haimul, the capital of the Korean Empire and the center of powerful allies to the Iron Horde. Their assault is aided and inhibited by the arrival of Choco and his pale orc armies as well as a fungal giant from the Sea of Sangha. After killing Warlord Gadgat in the Coliseum, the partially insane Butcher, the fungal giant and a pale orc enslaved Earth Fury. The adventurers invaded the Emperor's palace during their subsequent showdown with Imperator Markrok, Jokal abruptly arrives and uses his void powers to kill the Ogre Emperor and take control of his runestones. Jokal is killed shortly afterwards by the adventurers. With Haimol sacked, the defenders of the two worlds turn their attention to the Black Rock Foundry. Their battles through its twisting, sweltering corridors bring them face to face with a parallel 
Prince and its bestiary before ultimately confronting Warlord Blackhand. When the Warlord is killed in the ensuing battle, the Foundry is captured by the invaders. At the Blade Fury's command in Dalador, Gul'dan confronted Gromash and Kilrog and mocked the former for his Iron Horde failures and losses, which had included the death of the Gromash's son. Gul'dan renewed his offer of the demon blood only for Gromash to still refuse an attempt to attack him. Gul'dan effortlessly incapacitated the Iron Horde's war chief and elaborated on his offer, promising power like his to any orc who drank. Ultimately it is Kilrog who decides to agree, stepping forwards despite Gromash's protests and drinking the container's contents. He quickly mutates into monstrous fell orc, while Gul'dan assumes control of the Iron Horde and pledges to remake it into unstoppable weapon of conquest. This will be it for today. We are going to stop here. I hope you liked this version of Nana Grand. See you in the next video. Cheers.